Hi, welcome to the Electronics Lab. In this video, I'm going to use LT Spice to do an AC analysis on this circuit here to determine the voltage across and current through all the devices in the circuit. And then I'll compare the results to the values that I calculated by hand in a previous video. And if you're interested, you can find a link to that video in the description. I'm going to fly through the building of this circuit and just focus on the results. So let's jump over to LT Spice and start building. I'm not going to give you much commentary as I build the circuit. I'll save that for the analysis part of the simulation. Okay, circuit is built. I'm going to do an AC simulation. I'm going to start off by doing... I'm going to do a linear sweep. I'm going to start off by doing just one point, and I'm going to start at 60 hertz and end at 60 hertz. I'm going to do the sweep just at 60 hertz to see what results I can get. And here we have the AC analysis at 60 hertz. So it gives us the source voltage. It gives us the voltage across resistor 1, the voltage across capacitor 2, the current through capacitor 2, current through capacitor 1, current through the inductor, current through the resistor, and the current coming from the voltage source. The only two pieces of information that I'm missing are the voltage across the capacitor and the voltage across the inductor. And I'll show you how to get those in just a sec, but let's take these values that we have here and compare them to the values that I calculated by hand in that previous video. Okay, well the source voltage, that's expected 120 volts with a zero degree phase shift. That's just what we define the voltage source to be. The voltage across the resistor, we have 68.8568 volts with a phase angle of 41.2245. In my hand calculation, I got basically the same value right there. For the voltage across the capacitor 2, 76.4505 with a phase shift of 41.2245. Basically the same value there. Current through capacitor 2, 43.2 milliamps with a phase angle of 131.22 degrees. That matches up. Current through capacitor 1, 146 milliamps, phase angle of 58.37 degrees. That matches up pretty closely. Current through inductor 1, 43.23 degrees. Well, that's the same as through capacitor 2. Yeah, that matches up. Current through R1, 140.1 milliamps, phase angle of 41.225 degrees. That looks good. So the two things I'm missing, voltage across capacitor one and the voltage across the inductor. So let's go back to the original circuit here and I'm going to have to change the type of simulation that I do. I am going to do two points. The number doesn't matter as long as it's more than one. Start frequency of 60 Hertz and the stop frequency, the stop frequency doesn't actually matter. I'm just gonna make it 61. So I've got a second point. Run the simulation. Now here's where my values are going to be. I don't want any of these values that I can directly probe. I want to put in some traces that are differences between voltages. So the voltage across capacitor one will be the voltage from the source minus the voltage across resistor one. So I put in that mathematical expression, hit okay, and then that's going to pop up here. It doesn't look like very much because I'm only going from 60 to 61 hertz. You'll notice that the horizontal scale is in dB or dBV. If I change this to linear, then that's going to change it to volts. And I'm going to add the voltage for inductor one. So again, go into add traces and go V of VR1. So that's this voltage here minus the voltage at this point. So that's going to be V of VC2. And now that one gets added. Now, if I click on one of these, I get the cursors and I can drag this cursor all the way over to the left so that the cursor is at 60 Hertz. And I've got this little window that's off the screen, but if I bring it up here, you see it's 82. 76 volts with a phase angle of negative 31.63 degrees. And if I click on V of VR1 minus V of VC2, this is the voltage across the inductor. This now shows me the voltage across the inductor at 60 Hertz, 10.59 volts with a phase angle of negative 138.78 degrees. Now jumping back to the table with my hand derived results, and I've copied those values from the simulation here, the two values that we haven't checked. We've got the voltage across capacitor one, 82.76 volts, 82.76 volts, phase angle of negative 31.63 degrees. And that matches up to the hand calculations. The voltage across the inductor, 10.59 volts, 10.59 volts, phase angle of negative 138.78 degrees, phase angle of 221.22 degrees. Those look like they are not matching, but in fact they are. If you think about the phaser grid, if I'm going around to 221 degrees, I have to go to 180 and then about 41 degrees past 180 to get to 221 
when I'm going in a counterclockwise direction. If I'm going in a clockwise direction, I go the other way and I go to 138.78 degrees, which is about 41 degrees before 180. So those values actually match up. They're just being represented in two different ways here. All right, well, things are looking good. The simulation results matched up exactly with the results that I calculated by hand. And again, you can find a link to the video where I calculated by hand in the description. And also in the description, you can find a link to an online open source textbook that has this example in it, along with a bunch of other material for AC and DC circuits. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you soon.